Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. Well, we're going over, of course, part five, where we live, and lesson 13 talks exactly about that, right? City, town, and suburb, where many, many people live. In this unit, you will discover what city, town, and suburb are. What are these places? When we say city, what do we mean? What do we mean when we say, I live in a town? Or, do you live in the suburbs? What do we mean by those things? Well, in this lesson, we will find out. First of all, let's talk about a city. What is a city? If somebody says, I live in a city, what kind of image do we get in our heads? Well, the definition for city is a place where many people live and work. This is key, right? Many people live and work in a city. A lot of people. So as you can see, a city, this is a good picture of a city. A city has many tall buildings, right? These tall buildings are called skyscrapers because it seems like they scrape the sky. They're so tall, they reach up to the sky. There's many streets, a lot of traffic, a lot of movement, people moving back and forth. Usually there are big subway systems, lots of buses, a uh, very developed uh, place, environment, for people to live and to work. That's a city. A lot of people in a city. Now, sometimes people don't like to live in the city because it's too crowded. There's too many people living in the city. So they want to live outside the city, but not far outside the city because maybe their job or their office where they work is in the city. So they don't want to drive for a very long time. So they just move right outside the city and they move to the suburbs, a place that is close to a city. And we usually say uh, suburbs. I live in, I live in the suburbs. And usually people will say it as plural. I live in the suburbs. And suburbs can be an area like this. You know, it's not as crowded. The buildings are not as tall. And they're just homes. Homes, 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 homes. No real tall office buildings or other types of businesses or factories or things like that in the suburbs. Suburbs are almost 100% homes. Yes, you have schools, fire stations, police stations, but mostly you have homes. For example, in Seoul, what are some suburbs of Seoul? Well, of course, you have Gwangmyeong, right? You have Ilsan. These are places that are not in the city center where you have really tall buildings. It's places where people go to live and they commute. They commute to the city. Commute means that they go to work in the city. Commute to the city. You commute, you travel to your job. So you live close to a city so that your commute is not very long. Commute can be a verb, it can also be a noun. My commute is 30 minutes. That's a noun. As a verb, I commute to work every day. I travel to work, I travel to the city. So suburbs are very close to the city so people can commute very easily. Now, a town. A town is a place that is like a city, similar to a city, but smaller than it, smaller than a city. What is the difference between a city and a town? There's no real set definition saying, this is a city, this is a town. It's more of a feeling. When you're in a city, you know you're in a city. Very big buildings, right? Very tall skyscrapers. In a town, you don't ha you have buildings, and some buildings are big, but they're not that big. I mean, some of these buildings are quite big, but there's not a lot of them, and they're not as tall as in a city. There's not as many people in a town. Sure, you have streets, you have uh, street lights, you might have buses, but maybe, maybe you don't have a subway system, or maybe the subway system is very small. Uh, so towns are generally smaller than cities, and towns are also friendlier, more casual, a little more relaxed. In cities, people are busy, busy, busy running around, right? And they seem to be a little rude, or they don't have a lot of time for other people. But towns are more relaxed, more casual, more comfortable. 
people are usually friendlier in towns than they are in cities. Okay, we can also talk about states, right? A state, of course, in a state, and this is a map of America, a state is a part of a country that includes villages, towns, and cities. A state can be very big, like Texas, or it can be a small state like Rhode Island over here. They're just large areas of land and inside the state there are cities, towns, and villages. Village, by the way, is a very, very small town. Maybe only a few, you know, 50 people live there, a hundred or a few hundred people live there. That's a village. Very small town. And of course, each state has one city that is the capital of that state, right? So, for example, Nevada, Reno is the capital of Nevada, right? Or, uh, for example, California, Sacramento, Sacramento would be the capital of California. These states all have a capital city, one city that is the most important, right? That's their capital city. But they also have towns, they have villages, and of course many cities have suburbs. But this is a good map of the United States showing all the 50 states. These are 48 states all together, and then the two extra states, Alaska's up here, Hawaii's over there, out in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, Location, of course we're talking about location. Location, location, location is very important. A place where something or someone is. So something or someone, where is that person? Where is that place? That is the location. So what is the location of New York City? It's right there. That's the location. You look at a map and you can find it. Now, where is, the, where is my location? My location, of course, I can find on a map. This is my location. If you look at a map, you can look at your cell phone, right? Open the Maps app, and you can find your location. It shows you. It's a little triangle showing you your location on the map. So it's a place where something or someone is. That is location. Border. We saw, remember the map that we saw of the United States, the 50 states? We saw lines between all the states. Those are borders. Borders are lines that are between countries or states. A line that is between countries or states. Because you have to know your location. Are you inside the border or outside the border? If you're in Belgium, are you inside Belgium or are you outside Belgium, right? You know that if you know where the border is, right? If you're, out, if you're inside Belgium, you're here. If you're outside Belgium over here, you're in another country. You're in Germany, right? And also in Belgium, you can see the, the national borders and you can see the state borders, or I'm not sure what they say. They may not say states in Belgium, but they have the regional borders too. So you have national borders, national borders, and you have state borders or province borders. Some countries don't say states. Some countries say province, right? Like Canada, uh, they have different provinces. Okay, so uh, you can have national borders, which are the borders showing the nation, or you can have inside the nation either state borders or provincial province borders, the borders of a province. Okay, so there are many types of borders. Skyscraper, I showed you this word before. It's a very, very tall building, a very tall building. Reaches up, it almost, if you're standing, you look up at it, it looks like it reaches up to the sky. It's a very, very tall building. New York City has many, many skyscrapers downtown. Many other big cities have very tall skyscrapers. Now, we have our chart here showing these different locations that we've been talking about. There are different communities. We can see details for each city, suburb, town. A city, many people live and work here. Many people, that's the key. So many people. There are many skyscrapers. You can see many, many tall buildings. Streets are filled, filled with cars, buses, and trucks. So the streets are very busy a lot of traffic. Maybe there's a traffic jam. Let's take a look at New York City. This is downtown New York City. This is, I believe, Times Square. You can see so many people here. And look at these buildings. They're very, very tall. 
tall skyscrapers, lots of advertising going on, many, many people. Of course, a lot of these people are probably tourists, but also there are many people who live and work in this area, and there's a lot of traffic going on. Cities are very, very busy places. Now, a suburb is not so busy, right? You don't see so many people walking around. You do see them, but not as many as in a city. A suburb is located near a city, so it's on the edge of the city. It's a short commute into the city. There are many homes and apartments, more homes and apartments, not so many businesses. There are many more businesses in a city than there are in the suburbs. The suburbs are, the suburbs are for homes. Suburbs are where people live, not really where they work or where they uh, do their business, but the city is the place that has offices and businesses, more businesses. Of course, in the suburbs you can find schools and stores, but mostly you find houses, homes and apartments. Many people in a suburb have jobs in the nearby city, so they live close to the city. They have a short commute to the city. Of course, if there's a lot of traffic, that commute can be very long, so that's an unfortunate thing. Okay, then we also see a town. A town is away from a city. A town is not really connected to a city, okay? Uh, it's got its own character. It's away from a city. Now, it's interesting when you think about Seoul. Seoul has grown, and it's grown until it has touched other cities in the area, right? Suwon is another city, but if sometimes you don't know. If you drive from Seoul to Suwon, it's all city. So, in that case, we can call those types of cities satellite. Satellite cities. It's when a city like Seoul grows and it touches other cities. Those other cities become satellite cities to the big city. Suwon is a satellite city of Seoul. Okay? But a town is out in the country, right? It's a smaller type of city, but it's out in the country. Like, for example, Sokcho. I went to Sokcho a while ago to visit the East Coast and to see Soraksan. And Sokcho, it's not a village, it's not a city, it's in between. It's a town. It's a small version of a city. It's away from a city. It's smaller than a city. It has less homes schools and buildings than a city. And you can see this is a nice little town. You do have a, uh, a center. This is probably the town government building. That's the center of the town. You can see a church. We can see some businesses. But the buildings are not tall and there's lots of trees around. This is a good example of a town. You can see the streets are small. There are people walking along, but there's no, in this case, there's no traffic. There's no cars. And look at how friendly people are. These people don't know each other, but this man in the red shirt, he sees the dog, he's like, oh, nice dog, he pets it. And he doesn't know these people, and he gets up and he starts walking. Maybe he says something nice to the other people. People in a town are friendlier. They have more time. They, they have more leisure time, and they're more casual than people who live in a city. The buildings are not so tall. Uh, the streets are more... Uh, quieter, there's not a lot of traffic maybe in a town, there's just less people, less businesses, less traffic than in a big city. This is a good example of a town. And there's, like I said before, you can't really say uh, this is what a city is, this is what a town is. It's more of a feeling, right? When you're in a city, you feel, wow, oh, I'm in a city, it's very busy, tall buildings, lots of traffic. When you're in a town, you feel, Ah, oh, this is more comfortable, not so crazy, not so busy, right? It's more comfortable. Okay, let's match our words to the definitions. Here we have our words. City, suburb, suburb, town, town, state, location, location, and border, border. Okay, let's match these words to their definitions. Number one, a place that is close to a city. Many people will live there. They don't want to live in the city because it's too crowded in a city. They want to live where they have more space and they have a bigger house and it's not so busy. But they want to live near the city so they can commute to work. Where do they live? Well, they'll live in a suburb, right? In a suburb. Number two is a line. A line that is between countries or states. So that line that tells you 
If you're inside the country or outside the country, or if you're in a state or outside a state, what is that line? What do we call it? We can find it on maps. It's called a border, a border. Three, a place where something or someone is. So if you want to know where something or someone is, you want to know what is their location. What is their location? Okay, number four. A place where many people live and work. So it's a place where many, 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 many people live and work. What do we call that place, right? Very tall buildings, lots of traffic, people moving all over the place, lots of businesses, lots of office buildings. We call that place a city. Five, a place that is like a city, like a city, but smaller than it. So it's like a city, but usually much smaller than that, not as many people, more casual, more relaxed. We call that a town. Okay, town. Six, a part of a country that includes villages, towns, and cities. So it's a large part of a country. America has 50 of these parts or regions, and it has villages, towns, and cities. Each region or each part has one important city, the capital city of the state of the state, the capital city of the state, right? Okay, oh, actually I said before uh, Reno was the capital of Nevada, I was wrong, sorry. It's just south of Reno, it's Carson City is the capital of Nevada, sorry about that. Okay, but anyway, each state has a capital city. Okay, okay, here we can see a map of the United States, the United States, and we can see where it is on a map. We can find its location on a map. We can see the United States has 50 states. So if we, this doesn't show us the states, but if we look at this video, we can see the states. And look, the states are moving up and down because the people in those states are jumping up and down, right? No, that's crazy, okay? It's just a fun graphic that helps you see what the states are, right? They're all moving up and down. I just stopped it here uh, so that you can see. You can see California is separate from Nevada. And of course, these lines are the borders of the states, okay? And over here, well, you can, it's hard to see New York. The eastern states are usually smaller and, uh, than the western states. Western states are usually bigger because there's not many people living in the west uh, in history. Now these western states are filling up. But uh, eastern states are usually smaller. Of course, Florida is pretty big, but Texas is one of the biggest states in America. Okay, so these are the different states of America. You can see the distinctions very well. Of course, it doesn't really look like this. That's just a graphic to help you uh, see in 3D, right? Okay, now we've come to our map of the United States here. And we can see a couple of facts about the United States. Here's the map of the United States. We can find its location on a map, right? We see two details. The United States has 50 states. We don't see the states because the borders are not on this map, but if we take a look at a video, we can see the borders of the 50 states very easily here. And in fact, wow, they're moving. They're going up and down. Why? Because everybody in these states are jumping up and down, right? No, that's crazy. It's just a graphic, right? It's made to show you very easily uh, the, the, the differences between the states, right? And if you look at these states here, uh, the states in the eastern part are usually smaller than the states in the western part of the United States because there's fewer people living in those areas, so the states are much bigger. But this is a good map showing uh, 48, excuse me, 48 of the states of America. Of course, we can't see Alaska, we can't see Hawaii. Those are the other two states. So we only have 48 states here. We can see the lines between them. Those are the borders between the states. Remember, each state has towns, cities, and villages. Oh, by the way, I think I made a mistake before when I said the capital of Nevada is Reno. No, it's Carson City. Okay, I forgot that. But Carson City is just south of Reno. So each uh, state does have a very important city or town that is the capital of that uh, state. Okay. Coming back to our map again, we also see the U.S. shares, shares borders with Canada and Mexico. Here we see Canada, here we see Mexico. We can see the border between the two countries, right? Here's the United States of America, here's Canada. There is a line between the two countries, that is a border. So the United States really only shares 
borders with two countries, only two countries, and that is Canada and Mexico. Now, that's interesting because, you know, in Europe, you know, the countries share borders with many other nations, right? Europe is a very crowded and busy uh, area, and so those countries share borders with many other countries. But the United States only has, uh, shares borders with two countries because there's ocean on either side. That's one of the reasons, okay? But that's a good map of showing the location of the United States of America. Okay, let's complete the sentence to best describe the picture. Here we have a map here. We can see a pin in the, in the city, not town. Chicago is a city, very big city. Sometimes Chicago is called the second city in America because New York City is the first. Chicago was the second, historically. Of course, now people might say that Los Angeles is the second city in America because of importance, but things change, right? So Chicago is located right here. A map shows the what? the locations of places. So if you want to find out where is Chicago, you can put a pin in it to find it easily. That's why people put a pin uh, in a map to see, be able to see it very quickly. And that's where Chicago is. And you can see where Detroit is, of course, a very historical place for uh, the automobile industry, right? Uh, Detroit, Cleveland, Columbus, Indianapolis. These are important cities in the Midwest of America. Okay, now we have come to our true-false questions. So we circled T for true, F for false. Number one, a state includes villages, towns, and countries. So inside a state, we can find villages, we can find towns, and we can find countries inside a state. Is that true? Does that sound correct? Well, we can find villages, that's true. We can find towns, sure, small cities, we can find towns inside states. We can find countries inside states. That's not true, right? That's false because a state is inside a country. A country is not inside a state, right? If we have a country, and my artistic skills are not very good, I'm sorry. If we have America, <laughs> that's America, looks like a strange elephant. Okay, but of course this is a country. Inside America we have different states. Again, I'm not a very good artist. But these are states. They're inside a country. You can't put a country like Germany is not located inside California. That's crazy. Germany is a nation, right? German, uh, Germany is split up into different states, right, inside the country. So this is not correct. If we changed countries to another word, it would be correct. What word could we use that we learned, right? Cities. Yes, and then it would be okay. A state includes villages, towns, and cities. That's okay, but not countries. That doesn't make sense. Number two, a skyscraper, a building that's so tall it seems to touch the sky, is a very big airplane. No, I just said it's a big building, right? It's not a big airplane. A skyscraper is a building. They're trying to trick you because, you know, a very big airplane flies high in the sky. It can scrape the sky. But we don't call airplanes skyscrapers. We only call uh, buildings skyscrapers. So we would have to change airplane to building. If we did that, then the sentence would be okay. But we have to change it so it's false. Number three, the United States has 50 states. So there are 50 states in the United States. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Remember, we saw a couple of maps, right? And remember that map with the states going up and down? Remember, I made a point of saying there are only 48 of them on that map. We couldn't see Alaska and Hawaii, two more states that add up to 50. Uh, so the United States has 50 states. Okay, don't get confused by that because a lot of maps, you know, they can only show the 48 states that are together. Alaska and Hawaii are usually at the bottom of the map, but, you know, that's not their real location. But there are two extra states that are out there, right, that are not connected to the other 48 states. But in total, there are 50 states in the United States. Okay, well that wraps up our vocabulary section. Let's take a break. We'll come back and take a look at the reading passage. Okay, welcome back to the reading passage. We're going to take a look at the United States. This reading passage is going to focus on the country of the United States and talk about, of course, locations or places within that country. 
The United States is made, made of many different states. Of course, that's where it gets its name. It's the United States. It's the states that are united. They are together. United means together, as one. So there are 50 states, sure, but they are one country. They act together. They work together. Uh, you know, you can move from one to another, but they all make up one country. The United States, how many states? 50 states. Okay, many different states. There are, of course, borders between each state. You have to have borders between each state because you need to know where you are. Are you in Nevada or are you in California? Where are you? You need to know where the borders are. Of course, there are also borders between every country, and that's obviously logical too, because between the country, you should know whether you are in America or you are in Mexico. Sometimes that could be a very important question. Okay, are you in Mexico or are you in America? You need to know where is the border. There's a border between countries, there's borders between states. The United States shares borders. So when two countries touch each other, you can say that they share the border. The United States touches Canada in the north, Mexico in the south, so the United States shares borders with Canada and Mexico. Use a map or a globe, right? We talked about that in a previous lesson. A map is a flat uh, diagram. A globe is a round 3D uh, model of the Earth. Use a map or globe to find the location where things are of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So. If we use a map or globe, we can find the location of these places. Do you want to do that? Let's do that, okay? Okay, here's our video of a globe. Let's take a look here. So this is a globe. We can see it's starting to turn now. We're in the Pacific Ocean. We're turning over, we're going east, and we find the United States of America on the globe. So you turn the globe until you find the country you're looking for. You can find it right here, United States. We can see Canada up here. We can see Mexico down here. So we can use a globe to find the location of different countries. And of course, a globe tells us where the countries are in relation to, in relation to oceans and other countries. So we can find that the United States is between the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, and it's also between Canada and Mexico. It shares borders with those two countries. Okay. Now, inside the United States of America, right? Let's talk about, let's focus in, let's zoom in on the country. And then we can talk about city, town, and suburbs. A city, town, and a suburb are communities where people live. Communities can be large or small, right? The smallest one here is suburb, then town, then city. These are communities where people live. They are communities, a, a place where a group of people live and work and play together. A city is a place where many, 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 many people live and work. There are many skyscrapers in the city. What is a skyscraper? A skyscraper is a tall building where people work. It's a tall building where people work. What do people do there? They work there. Okay, and there are many skyscrapers in the city. That's how you can tell the difference between a city and a town because you can see Wow, there are so many skyscrapers in the city. Okay, after talking about a city, we moved on to a town. And there's two things about a town that are described in this reading passage. First, a town is smaller than a city. And second, there are fewer people in a town. So these two sentences, we're focusing in on a town. What's the difference between a town and a city? Two things. One, it's smaller than a city. Two, there are fewer people in a town. So one detail, a city is smaller, I mean, I'm sorry, a town is smaller than a city, and the second detail, a town has fewer people than a city. Okay, that's the town. Then we move on to a suburb. A suburb is an area close to a city. So a suburb is close to a city, probably next to the city. Many people live in the suburbs, in the suburbs, but travel to the nearby city. They travel because what are they doing? They are commuting. They commute to the nearby city. And commute, of course, you commute to a city for work or for school. 
Sometimes、uh, kids who live in the suburb might commute to a good school in the city, and that means every day, well, almost every day, Monday to Friday, they go into the city to work or to study. Okay, let's take a look at our reading skill chart. We're looking at the main idea and details. The main idea is there are communities where people live, and there are so many different types of communities. Right? There's cities, there's villages, there's towns, suburbs, also states and countries can also be included in the idea of community.、Um, we have details that support this main idea. One, two, three. These are the words that we need to fill in the blanks for the details. We have suburb, skyscrapers, city, and smaller. A beep is a place where many people live and work.、So、many people live and work there. So many people. What are we talking about here? We're talking about, of course, a city. A city is a place where many people live and work. There are many beep. What are there many of in a city? We have suburbs, skyscrapers, or smaller. Which one fits? Right. Of course, you chose. Skyscrapers. There are many really tall, big buildings in a city. There are many skyscrapers in a city. A town is beep than a city. Remember, in the reading passage, we said there were two differences that they showed the differences between a town and a city. There were two of them. Remember, one of them was what? A town is smaller than a city, right? A town is smaller than a city. The second one, remember, there are fewer people. In a town than in a city, but we don't have that detail here, right? So that's okay. But we have one of the details: a town is smaller than a city. That's important there. A beep is an area close to a city. So now we're looking for an area close to a city where many people live, but they travel, they commute to the nearby city. So where is that place? Remember, it's usually homes and apartments, mostly homes and apartments. We call that place, of course, a suburb. It is a suburb. Okay, let's move on to the reading comprehension questions. Number one, a very tall building where people work is called a what? We just talked about that, right? A very tall building. That was one of our blanks on the previous slide. It is, of course, a skyscraper, not an apartment, right? Because people don't generally work in an apartment unless they're working at home. But usually, an apartment is for living. And a border is not a building, <laughs> right? So that's not the correct answer. A skyscraper, a very tall building where many people work. A skyscraper usually has many offices in it. Okay, number two, you can use a what to find the location of a state. How can you find the location of a state? Do you use a border and a city? That doesn't sound right. That won't help you. A map or a globe? Yes, a map or a globe. You can use a map or a globe to find the location of a state. You can also use a map and globe to find the location of a town, a city, or a country. But you can use a map and a globe to find the location of many places, not just a state. But that's true.、Uh, that's the best answer for that one. See, border and skyscraper. That doesn't make sense. You can use a skyscraper to find a、uh, state. That's silly, right? Map and globe. Are the objects that you use to find the locations of places, and a state is a place, so it's B. Okay, question number three: A city is a place where many people work, and so we see one true thing: a place where many people work. We're looking for another true statement about a city. Which one is another true statement about a city? A, and it has many borders around it. What? That sounds weird. We didn't talk about borders when we're talking about a city, so that's kind of silly, right? That's not right. B. And it's much bigger than a town. Remember, in the reading passage, we saw two details about a town. One of the details was a town is much smaller than a city. So if we reverse that, if we make it the opposite, we can see that a city is much bigger than a town. That's true, right? That fits. So B is true. A town is much smaller than a city, so a city is much bigger than a town, and that is true. C. And it is smaller than a suburb. A city is smaller than a suburb. That's silly. That's not true. Okay. Four. Most people who work in a city. So most people who work in a city a travel across a country border to where they live. That's weird. 
that would be like most people who work in a city, like New York City. Then they're going to go all the way to Canada because they live in Canada? That's not true. And that's, not, that's very silly too in most cases because people who are citizens of a country live and work inside that country. They don't live in one country and then work in another country. Not most people. Maybe a few people do that, but that would be a very rare circumstance, a very rare case. Most people live and work in the same country. So A is silly, that's not true. B, most people who work in a city travel from a suburb where they live, right? We talked a lot about that. We said that they commute. They live in the suburb and they travel to the city. That's called a commute, that is true. C, travel from a town where they live. So many pe most people who work in a city travel from a town. Remember, a town is usually separate from a city. It might be out in the country, away from the city. Now, of course, there are people who probably work in a town and then come into the city to work. That's probably true in, in a, a few cases, but not most, right? Most people will live in the suburbs. They don't want to live too far away from the city because that takes a lot of time every day for their commute. So that's not true. The best answer is B. They travel from the suburb where they live, and that's true. Okay, let's come to our uh, chart again. We saw this chart before, different communities. Now we have so many details, remember? That was a big chart. We have city, suburb, and town. What can we say about the city? Think about those things. Can we get them all? Can we do it together? What can we say about a city? Well, usually there's many, many people who live and work in the city. Uh, the city has many tall buildings called skyscrapers, right? What else can we get? We can get streets are filled with cars, buses, and trucks. So we see many people live and work here. There are many skyscrapers. Streets are filled with cars, buses, and trucks. Okay, and that's what we do. That's what the details that we can fill in about the city. What about the suburb? Do you remember? Is it too hard? What do we think about suburbs? Suburbs are usually close to the city, right? They're close to the city. They're nearby the city. Their suburbs usually have more homes and apartments in the suburbs. Anything else? Many people in a suburb have jobs in the nearby city. So, suburb is located near a city. There are many homes and apartments in a, in a suburb. And many people in a suburb have jobs in the nearby city so that they travel, they commute to the nearby city. Okay, let's take a look at town. As a town, we can see there are many buildings, but they're usually smaller. Towns are smaller than cities, right? There are fewer people who live in the town. Also, there's not as much traffic, right? So it is away from a city. It is smaller than a city. It has less homes, schools, and buildings than in a city. So towns are generally smaller than cities. And remember what I told you before. Uh, there's no real specific guideline or guide to say this is a city and this is a town. It's more of a feeling. You get a certain feeling when you're in this type of environment. You look up and you say, wow, this is a city, no question. If you're in this type of environment, you look around and say, yeah, this is a town. It's quieter than not as many people. There's more trees around. The buildings are not so tall. So you get a different feeling between city and town. And of course, suburb is just mostly homes, as you can see in this picture. A town has a mixture of businesses, actually a collection of businesses together. And maybe people live on the outskirts or the edges of the town. But people can also live inside the town or downtown. Just like in the city, there are many tall apartment buildings in the city where people do live in the city. But remember, it's very crowded. Uh, homes and apartments are usually a lot smaller and more expensive. So many people will go to the suburbs. Okay, well, I kind of summarized that already. Uh, we're talking about different communities in this lesson, lesson 13, we're talking about cities, towns, and suburbs. So where do you live? Where do you like to live? Where do you want to live? Um, these are good questions to ask yourself. And of course, now you can compare different places where many people live, and we can see what the advantages or disadvantages perhaps of living in each place is. And also you can live in one place and work in another place. So there's lots of choices out there for you. Uh, maybe when you get older, you can make that choice. Where do you want to live? Right, right in different parts of your life. There's lots of different places to do that. Okay, well, we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.